situated on Porphyry Island, the Porphyry Point Island Light Station thrusts itself deep into the iconic turquoise waters of Lake Superior. From Mid-Island and looking towards the west, Thunder Bay and the Nor'Wester Mountains can be seen on the horizon. And looking south, Isle Royale and the international border is only 15 kilometers away. Dreadnought Island reminds sailors to stay clear of the island and its many reefs. Many people visit the island shores to see the Black Sands Beach created by a string of cracks in the Earth's crust created millions of years ago. And from the east end of the island an archipelago of islands can be seen stretching as far as the eye can see. Separating Edward Island and Porphyry is Walker's Channel which was a welcome sight to the Cour de Bois and the indigenous peoples to shelter in the area for the night. Black Bay, home at one time to many fishing tugs, mining barges and logging tugs, is now often frequented by kayakers and boaters. And to the Cour de Bois, they were always pleased to see the sleeping giant as it meant that their final destination was near. Now primarily a recreational site, boaters, canoeists, and kayakers can be seen exploring the diverse watercourses and landscapes in the area. When visiting the island, two assistant lighthouse keepers will greet you when they're not busy doing their daily chores. Porphyry's Point is very distinctive as it juts into Superior and at one time the heliport shuttled keepers to and from as necessary. The 1908 Fog Alarm Building sits on the south shore while the 1960s Steel Tower is centered on the site. The keepers' dwellings provide accommodations and shelter to visitors today. Summer students quickly learn that if it doesn't move, then paint it. The three official colors of the Coast Guard are red, white, and battleship gray. The helipad gets regular visitors during the summer months, and it's the most accessible way on and off the island during inclement weather. Following the red and white color scheme, a wooden chair is adorned with the official colors and the organization's logo. Situated beside the light tower, the old fog alarm building has been repurposed into a mini museum with many interesting artifacts and accompanying stories. The Gordon Graham Gallery, a solar-powered installation, requires dusting and cleaning on a regular basis. Gordon Graham, a former lightkeeper from the 1980s, features some of his photography work here. Included in the display is also a short film commissioned by the CBC on his family life on the island in 1980. The light tower doubles as an observation tower to see the full sight and gives the summer students the ability to review the landscaping and to see how the work's coming on on the site. Inside the keeper's dwelling, more work is taking place to identify local species of flowers and to help educate future visitors on the abundance of flora and fauna on the island. 
The plant identification book helps to build an understanding of the Arctic dischunk found here and is to be used as a tool to help with visiting school groups in understanding the diversity of the area. Meanwhile, the Artists in Residence program saw four artists visit for the very first time last year to participate in working on their craft. Photographer Lois Nuttall captured many beautiful images. And freelance writer Adam Depontier takes advantage of the veranda with Puff, his dog. Mixed media artist Gail Buzzy spent a couple of weeks exploring the island and creating many works of art. She was reminded of her days at summer camp and recently said that the experience at Porphyry created a change in her style. Never with a shortage of chores to perform, the assistant lightkeepers work to find firewood for the evening's campfire. Many times during the summer months, volunteer work parties attend to the grounds and dock area to make it safe and operational for visitors. The assistant lightkeepers sometimes get a little bit of extra time to go and explore the island. Here, they're at the landing site. The docks, boathouse, and campgrounds are what usually greet visitors for the first time when they arrive. The grounds offer many kayakers a place to pitch their tent, or for boaters a place to tie up for the night. Inside the boathouse, an interpretive history wall features information upon arrival for visitors to see how the site's been impacted by the lighthouse operation. From old wooden boats to family portraits from years past. In draft form and ready for this oncoming season, Parks Canada is creating further interpretive history signage to help the visitors navigate the context of their surroundings. Parks Canada has also introduced their Red Chairs program on the island. And it is not only in the day that there is action, but also in the nighttime skies over Porphyry Island. Millions of stars are captured by Victor Cementi's lens. Mm -hmm. 